So let's talk for a second about frozen shoulder because it's really common for people to come in and say, a doctor, a PT, somebody told me that there's a mechanical issue with my shoulder and I'm not able, because of what's going on in the joint, to raise it above this height. I can't do it. It doesn't go up. This one goes up to here. This one doesn't go up. Okay. If you've been given that explanation in the past, I'm not trying to re-diagnose what's going on with you, but I want to tell you a little bit more about the whole universe of what could be potentially going on. Right? It's a little bit like in astronomy when they started out looking at the stars and the planets going around and they built a model of the universe based on what they saw in the heavens. So the earth was at the center and everything was going around it in circles. And then a little while later somebody came along and said, you know when I look at the data here what I can see is that it actually makes a little bit more sense from a timing point of view if you put the sun in the center of our solar system and get all the planets rotating around the sun. And then somebody else comes along and says, well, if we think about it in terms of forces and gravity, you can actually start to explain why the, this period is this long and this one is this long and you see this and that and that. So based on the empirical data that they were seeing, over time we developed more and more accurate ways to describe those phenomena. It's a little bit like that. The mechanical explanation of your joint may be the most simplistic explanation for what's going on. And there may be other forces at play here. And if you make that same kind of revolution in terms of how you look at what the body's doing, you're going to understand it empirically what's going on. You're going to understand that much better. So I want you to try two things and tell me if that changes how much you can move your shoulder. And if you try these two things and it actually makes a difference in terms of the range of motion in the shoulder, what that's going to tell us is that there are other forces at work besides the pure joint mechanics of what's going on. And for those of you reading ahead, that's going to be the nervous system governing how the body moves more than any of the mechanical moving pieces by themselves. Okay? So try these two experiments. First, set a baseline for yourself. So take your arm with a locked elbow and from the shoulder joint only, rotate it up. And I want you to feel where that range of motion is, where everything kind of locks in place. Okay? I don't care if it's here or here or back here, but I want you to notice where the, stu the stuck spot is and take it to the end range of motion. And then try this. Step forward with your opposite leg. So if you have your right arm up, you step forward onto your left leg, okay? And do the same thing so that right hip has a nice stretch to it. You're in full extension with the right leg. Try your shoulder again. And tell me if that makes a difference in terms of range of motion. Try it like this. If you really want to see the contrast, start here in your full back position. Step out and see if you can move it a little bit more. That's experiment number one. If you saw a difference there in those two ranges, just by stepping out and putting this hip into extension, guess what? There are other responses in the nervous system that are governing your range of motion besides the shoulder joint itself. It's part of a connected system. Here's the next one that's a little bit more mysterious for most people. Take your arm up again, and I want you to look to the right and feel what that does to your shoulder and look to the left and feel what that does to your shoulder. Okay? So again, really simple. Let's limit it to just eye movement. You can do the head if you want, but eye movement will make it more, more clear. So you can put your finger on your nose if you can't move your eye. Don't let anybody see you in this position. Turn the eyes to the side. Feel what that does. Other side. Now, without getting into the specifics of what's going on with this eye position, if you noticed a difference in range of motion or tightness at the original end range of motion when you looked one way or the other, guess what? A neurological response is governing your shoulder range of motion and it's not frozen because there's something deficient mechanically with what's going on. So all this is by way of saying 
you need to have a more nuanced set of tools and a broader look at the nervous system first to understand what's going on in any one moving part. There's no such thing as a shoulder walking down the street all by itself or getting frozen all by itself. It's in the context of movement and movement is governed by the nervous system. So if you want to change movement patterns, you've got to work with your own nervous system.